Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Testing, 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 one, two, three, three, two, one. All right, welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is KJV Exposed. That is King James Version Exposed because we use the King James Version and we look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to be looking at the Gospel of John, chapter 20, part 2, as we continue our study in the Gospel of John. And we'll get right to that study as after we open up here with the word of prayer. Once again, we're going to open up with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen all right we'll get right to the study as soon as i get it pulled up here all right, once again, this is Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study, and we're continue, continuing our study in the Gospel of John, and we're in, John, and we're in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and this is part 2 of chapter 20. John, chapter 20, verse 17 reads, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. In the last lesson, Mary had just recognized Jesus and called him Rabboni, or Master. Of course, it is a great desire on her part to touch him, to make sure this is not just her imagination. We spoke of the two kinds of bodies that are explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In the last lesson, natural body and the spiritual body, Mary was expressing a desire to hold on to his physical presence for fear that she would once again lose him. Jesus' reference to his ascension signifies that he would only be temporarily with them, and so she desperately wanted him to stay. He could not. Jesus was with them only for 40 more days, and then he ascended. Look at Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. After he went to the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit, that is the Helper, so that they would not feel abandoned. My brethren, disciples have been called slaves or friends. Look at chapter 15, verse 15. But not brothers until here. Because of Jesus' work on the cross, in place of the sinner, this new relationship to Christ was made possible. Look at Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 27, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, and Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 through 13. My own personal belief is that this is the spirit body which the Spirit of Jesus has reunited with. Jesus tells Mary to go tell the disciples. This makes Mary a missionary. She is to carry the good news to her brethren. Mary will be the first to spread the great resurrection story. We will see in the next verse that Mary is obedient and does just exactly what Jesus has told her to do. All believers in Christ have been adopted into the family of God. He is our Father God as well as the Father and God of Jesus. I need to get a drink here. John chapter 20 verse 18 reads, Mary Magdalene 
came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. We see here that John leaves no doubt which Mary this is that brings the gospel message. Notice that Jesus uses those of the earth whom the world believes is unworthy to bring his message. John chapter verse 20. John chapter 20 verse 19 reads Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto him Peace be unto you This was Sunday evening of the resurrection the doors are shut and Jesus appears in his resurrection body. Evidently, he could appear, disappear, pass through material, and defy the law of gravity as he did at the ascension in his resurrection body. The Greek word indicates the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. Since the authorities had executed their leader, they reasonably expected that Jesus' fate could be their own. Peace be unto you. Jesus' greeting complements his It is finished for his work on the cross accomplished peace between God and his, and his people. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and Ephesians chapter 2 verses 14 through 17. Jesus is now in his glorified body. It is not necessary for him to open the door. This appearance of Jesus is the same evening that he had shown himself to Mary at the sepulchre that morning. This is still Sunday. These disciples had probably assembled to sort out what Mary had told them. They were afraid to meet publicly for fear that they would be killed. Jesus is the King of Peace, so this greeting is no big surprise. John chapter 20, verse 20 reads, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus proved that he who appeared to them was the same one who was crucified. Look at Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Jesus' appearance was different, and yet, the scars were still in his hands inside. The spirit body has a great deal to do with the physical body, but is changed also. These disciples had been confused, and perhaps some did not believe when Mary told them that she had seen Jesus. Now they know for themselves that he is risen, and they are glad. John chapter 20, verse 21 reads, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. This commission builds on uh, chapter 17, verse 18, and also look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. There is a peace that comes when we receive the truth of Jesus Christ into our lives. We have no fear of death because we know there is a resurrection. Now Jesus gives them a job to do. They are to carry the good news of the gospel to the entire world. Just as the Father sent Jesus on a mission to save the world, now Jesus sends his followers to save the world. John chapter 20 verse 22 reads, And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Here the disciples are anointed, are anointed by the Holy Spirit preliminary to the book of Acts. This corresponds to the Holy Spirit's special ministry in the Old Testament. Such ministries were for special tasks. Soon the Holy Spirit would come and permanently abide with them. Look at Acts chapter 2. Since the disciples did not actually receive the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost, some 40 days in the future, 
The statement must be understood as a pledge on Christ's part that the Holy Spirit would be coming. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> this Holy Spirit would breathe into these disciples eternal life. This would empower them to carry out the work that Jesus had begun. The very next verse tells you something <clears throat> excuse me, of the power he has breathed into them. Jesus, give the, Jesus gives the spirit of everlasting life along with the powerful anointing. This divine life which Jesus gives these disciples will empower them to do things impossible to do in the flesh. I need to get another drink here. John chapter 20 verse 23 reads Whosoever sins ye remit they are remitted unto them and whosoever sins ye retain they are retained this is a divine prerogative look at Mark chapter 2 verse 7 the anointing of the Holy Spirit makes this possible this is a very hard scripture except for the fact that that these disciples are extensions of Jesus' ministry. <clears throat> Just as Jesus had said on another occasion, that when two agree as touching anything on this earth, it shall be done of my Father in heaven. This verse does not give authority to Christians to forgive sins. Jesus was saying that the believer can boldly declare the certainty of a sinner's forgiveness by the Father because of the work of his Son if that sinner has repented and believed the gospel. The believer with certainty can also tell those who do not respond to the message of God's forgiveness through faith in Christ that their sins, as a result, are not forgiven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. We also have read here in John chapter 14 that believers can do the same miracles Jesus did when he was on earth if they are done in the name of Jesus. This is an empowering this is an empowering to use the name of Jesus. These disciples are an extension of Jesus ministry. They must do these things in his name is the only difference. It is Jesus' power. In verses 24 and through 26, Thomas has already been betrayed as a loyal pessimistic. Jesus did not review Thomas for his failure, but instead a passionate plea offered him proof of his resurrection. Jesus lovingly met him at the point of his weakness. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Thomas's actions indicated that Jesus had to convince the disciples rather forcefully of his resurrection. For example, they were not gullible people predisposed to believing in resurrection. The point is they would not have fabricated or hallucinated it since they were so reluctant to believe even with the evidence they could see. John chapter 20, verses 24 and 25 read. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. This reminds me so much of many people today. They want facts before they will believe on Jesus. Facts and faith are not the same. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. This scripture above is why a person who does not believe today is called a doubting Thomas. The Bible must be taken by faith. Let me say that again. The Bible must be taken by faith. Abraham's righteousness was because he had faith. We are heirs with Abraham if we have faith. John chapter 20 verses 26 and 27 read. And after eight days again 
His disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then, then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas did not enjoy the extra eight days of faith that the others had. Just, Je just Jesus suddenly appearing in the room should have been enough. But when Jesus repeated the very things Thomas had said, Thomas believed. As I said, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It bothers me when people get too caught up in the literal world and doubt everything and everyone. God is a spirit. We must understand and believe within our spirit to please God. John chapter 20 verse 28 reads, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Suddenly, Thomas moves from the unbelieving to the side of undeniable faith. His eyes have been opened, and he calls Jesus more than Savior. He calls him Lord, which means he is Jesus' servant. The widest understanding comes when he calls Jesus his God. With these words, Thomas declared his firm belief in the resurrection and therefore the deity of Jesus the Messiah and Son of God. Look at Titus chapter 2 verse 13. This is the greatest confession a person can make. Thomas' confession functions, functions as the fitting capstone of John's purpose in writing this gospel. Look at verses 30 and 31. These words from Thomas from the climax to John's gospel and summarize its theme. John chapter 20 verse 29 reads, excuse me, John chapter 20 verse 29 reads, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus foresaw the time when such tangible evidence as Thomas received would not be available. When Jesus ascended permanently to the Father, all those who believe would do so without the benefit of seeing the resurrected Lord. Jesus pronounced a special blessing on those who believe without having Thomas's privilege. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. I really believe for this very reason God has not allowed the masses to see the Ark of Noah on Mount Ararat. When this great ship is found, photographed, and revealed to all, many will believe because of undeniable evidence. I believe God does not want us to believe with our mind. God wants us to believe with our heart because we love him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me read that again. Hebrews chapter, one, chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. This is the faith God respects. It takes no faith at all to believe in something you can see with your eyes. In chapter 11 of Hebrews, there is a large number of people listed who believed without seeing. God loves and blesses them the most. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31 read, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that she may that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ the son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name these verses constitute the goal and purpose for which John wrote the gospel John tells us here that he wrote this gospel for purposes of conversion that ye might believe and of sanctification that ye might have life notice when you must Notice what you must believe. You must believe that Jesus is Messiah, 
the Christ, the anointed one of God. When you believe he is the son of God, you believe he was born of a virgin. We receive everlasting life when we truly believe in our heart these things. Romans chapter 9 verses Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 read that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this has been Empty Cross Ministries Bible Study. I'm Brother David. Once again, the name of the program is KJV. That exposed, that is King James Version exposed because we use the King James Version. We look at each verse, break it down, bring it to life, and expose the meaning. If you want to see uh, the lessons and, devo and devotionals in a written out form, you can find those on our website at www.EmptyCrossMinistries.com, on Empty Cross Ministries Facebook page, and Empty Cross Ministries group Facebook page, as well as my own personal Facebook page. Excuse me just a moment here. All right. We're going to close out here once again with the Lord's Prayer. And I hope I've said it enough now, and you've said it with me, that you might have it memorized. This is a very common prayer to use. A lot of uh, churches, denominations, use it in their worship service at some point. And we're going to talk about the Apostles' Creed at some point also. But right now we're still with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Folks, stay safe, be blessed, stay in the word, and write the word upon your heart. Until next time, we'll be in the Gospel of John, chapter 21. Chapter 21. Lost my voice there.